The success of an integrated circuit depends highly on the efficiency with which the design can be converted from concept to the architecture to logic and memory to circuit and ultimately to the physical layout. With the increasing complexity of the design, efficiency is increasing dramatically. To resolve this complexity, we need a systematic and organized design planning in VLSI. And that is what we are going to discuss in this video. Hi and welcome. In this video, we are going to discuss about one of the very fundamental concepts of VLSI, which is structured design strategies in VLSI, consisting of hierarchy, regularity, modularity, and locality, which almost all of us, either we are students or VLSI designers, should thoroughly understand. So let's get started. We all know that a good VLSI design system should provide consistent descriptions at all relevant levels of abstraction, be it architectural level or RTL or block level or logic level or circuit level. If it fails to do so, it's not a good design itself. Also, VLSI design is a continuous trade-off between the following parameters which uh, I have listed. One is the performance, which indicates the speed and the power, functionality and the flexibility of the design, the size of the die and hence the cost of the die itself because the size of the die is directly proportional to the cost of the die. Time to design is also very important in this competitive market which is also cost of engineering and schedule and also the ease of verification, test generation and testability which I have discussed in the previous video how design for testability is so important. We all know that the process of designing a system on silicon is extremely complicated. The role of good Good VLSI design tools or aids is to reduce this complexity and increase productivity and ensure the designer of a working product. There are two main approaches to reduce complexity. One is the constraints. By using constraints, we can make the processes mostly automated. We can have the automation tools so that they can carry out because nowadays we have millions of instances in a single block or billions of transistors in a single chip. The pro most of the processes should be automated now and automation requires constraints. The second one is using abstractions. The designer can collapse the details and arrive at a simpler object to handle. And we will see how these constraints and abstractions are implemented in uh, design planning. To implement these constraints and abstractions, there are four techniques which are used extensively in VLSI design approach. Now listen to me carefully. This may not be used in all design approaches, but it is used in most of the design approaches to reduce complexity. And I'm going to explain only the hardware implementation of these techniques or concepts. There are software approaches too, but I'm not going to discuss about those. Now the first one is hierarchy. Hierarchy simply means the technique or the rule of divide and conquer strategy. We divide a complex design into sub-modules. The hierarchy clearly says that divide the system into modules and then sub-modules till the deepest sub-modules, the smallest sub-module, is easily implementable. Okay, let's see this in, a, in an example over here. Let's consider a microprocessor, a complex design, right? So this microprocessor can be divided into the instruction decode part, ALU part, and the register file part, and also the memory. These are not the only things that are required for a microprocessor, but I have listed some of these. Now you see that ALU may need an adder, and if it is a 4-bit ALU, now you need a 4-bit adder. A 4-bit adder needs a single-bit adder. Now we divide a 4-bit adder into one bit adders and finally we divide these one bit adders or full adders to AND and OR gates. Now you can go and break down this as well to transistors but almost all the design that happens today in the industry is basically gate based, standard cell based. So these gates are usually pre-built. That's the reason why I have written or pre-built component is available. The submodule, the deepest submodule, is either easily implementable or there should be a pre-built component available. This need not be a gate. You see that the gates are 
part of library which we call standard cell library but these can also be IPs you see you can buy an entire ALU which means you don't need to divide it further you can directly incorporate an ALU inside your microprocessor or the register file you can buy an intellectual property from another vendor and directly use it in your microprocessor design now the equivalency tools need to ensure the consistency of each domain so the equivalency tools should ensure that the logic we have implemented by dividing is same as the logic which we need the second concept in this approach is regularity in fact dividing a system through hierarchy alone cannot solve the problem of complexity the reason is we may divide a system into a large number of different submodules it they know they may not be same we are just saying let's divide this into submodules right we are not saying we have to divide it to divide it like this or not like that we are not saying that so now we are saying we are giving a constraint we are saying that divide a system into hierarchies or submodules so that they are similar building blocks which means if you see here a four bit adder is divided into one four one bit adders now four one bit adders adders are same now if we have constructed one one bit adder can't we just reuse this one bit adder four times pretty simple right so i make some changes to one bit adder all the bit one bit adders gets a change you see that we are reducing complexity here and this regularity can exist at all levels of design hierarchy be it circuit level where we can use uniformly sized transistors or at gate level where logic gates like and or these can be used at logic level you can you we can use uh, rams or roms which are all the ram cells are same at architectural level we can use identical cores we can use entire cpus repeatedly so it's like design reuse mostly depends on the principle of regularity also the regularity aids in verification efforts by reducing the number of subcomponents to validate that's because if you see as i said before if i if i am able to verify this one bit adder works properly since i have repeated this four times i just have to ensure that this is working properly and the remaining remaining things will work the same way so we are reducing the complexity of verification as well the third concept is basically the modularity in in ic the modularity corresponds to a clearly defined behavioral structural and physical interface why are we even talking about it we divided the we if you see this figure we divided the microprocessor into different sub modules we are, we are also saying that we will try to divide it in such a way that the building blocks the sub modules are similar building blocks now there are two problems here we haven't discussed about how do we integrate it back right it's it's very important as well now if you had one single design it wasn't there wasn't a con concept called integration now you have one bit adder you had to you have to integrate this all these one bit adders and put it in a four bit adder and for that we need an interface now there should be communication between these one bit adders it's not just simple right if we if we need a four bit adder these one bit adders also should communicate the carry should go from this one bit adder to this one so there is a communication that happens so there is an interface between this one bit adder and this one bit adder and a clearly defined interface is what we are saying a modularity the interface indicates the function name signal type electrical and timing constraints on ports of the design if the fan in is too large and the if the drive capability of the cells are too small it can lead to unexpected timing problems we cannot we may not able to converge the timing properly so it's very important for us to have properly defined modularity otherwise what can happen if we don't have a good design approach in uh, with the modularity then what we are doing we are just dividing them into sub modules and we are increasing the complexity itself and some of the attributes which are associated with this modularity which we need to properly define are these the position the connection layer and the wire width of the interfaces which means the ports we need to clearly define those uh, these are the physical uh, informations or attributes the position the connection layer and the wire width of the interfaces the input which we can these we can define in hdl which are uh, whether the port is an input output bidirectional port or whether it's a power or ground these specifications should be mentioned also we always define whether a port is an analog port or a digital port so the final concept is locality by defining well characterized interfaces for a module we are effectively saying that other than the specified 
external interface the internals of the module are unimportant to other modules which means let's say there is this one bit adder i am saying that from this one bit adder the carry goes to this one bit adder right now other than this one carry which is going to this one bit adder this one bit adder doesn't even care about the other implementations within this uh, one bit adder it's just the interface it cares about so what are we trying to do we are just trying to hide the information from this one this module to this module other than what is important and this hiding information provides or reduces complexity usually locality means temporal locality or adherence to a clock or a timing protocol when we say adherence to clock it is mostly associated with the local clock not the global clock so all the logic within a sub module is associated with a local clock so it doesn't even have to care about the global clock and if it's an asynchronous system we will have the timing protocol other than the clock so it's associated with that timing protocol the implementation examples of this locality are uh, the physical uh, examples are analog blocks are placed adjacent to the io pads mostly the reason is this that the analog blocks such as adcs or dacs draw a huge amount of dc current and if you want to reduce the total resistance then the metal length should be pretty small for which we have to move these analog blocks adjacent to the io pads also the floor planning the strategy of floor planning should be such that if these two blocks are communicating then these two should be placed adjacent to each other also the placement of the cells should be such that the routings the length of the wires are reduced i hope you got some idea about the structured design approaches the techniques such as hierarchy modularity regularity and the locality that's all for now i'll see in the next video please do subscribe to my channel if you haven't done and bye bye